Bundy's Garage, Bundy here. Today I'm here with my good buddy Dennis, and uh, we're gonna go over some things. This is uh, actually gonna be a actually gonna be one long video, and I'm gonna actually splice it up into probably six or seven different videos. So you can actually, um, if you guys want, you can click in the description below, and we'll uh, there'll be a link to the full length video if you're watching just one of the one of the mini series of this. We're actually gonna go over a couple different things. Uh, Dennis is a mechanic. How long have you been a mechanic for? About 13 years. 13 year mechanic. Are you- Because the, the, our viewers, the guys that are watching these videos are interested in going into becoming a mechanic or turning wrenches. If if a kid out of high school is wanting to go, say, into a dealer, because you've, you've worked at both. You've worked at independent shops, you've worked at dealerships. If somebody just wants to get fresh out of school going into a dealership, what, what do you think the best way that is to do? Do you become a mechanic's helper? Do you go talk to the service writer, say, hey, or the, the, I'm sorry, the service manager, say, hey, I'll, I'm ready and willing, let me try doing oil changes, or, you know, what is the best approach to get in a dealership setting? Uh, realistically, without any experience, your luck to get into a dealership um, is going to be starting out as a lube tech or maybe even a lot porter. Um, a lot of the dealerships aren't really looking for guys that don't know anything, you know. Um, even as a lube tech, there's a big liability in uh, hiring mm. a guy that don't know how to change oil. You leave a drain plug loose or le a double gasket and an oil filter <laughs> and you burn a motor, you know, that's thousands of dollars on the dealership. You now know? do you think it's the same way going into an independent garage? Uh, I think in an independent garage, there's a little bit more oversight. There's, you know, the, a lot more hands-on with the, with the owners and the people there. Um, at, with my experience, I think, you know, you, you got a guy that you're probably working next to. You may not be flat rate. Um, so, and as a, as a helper, you're probably going to be hourly anyways, make a minimum wage just to get the experience. So, um, it just really depends on the environment you're put into. You know, there, there are independent shops that work just like the dealership and there are dealerships that, that are very hands-on. It's just, you gotta really do your research and talk to the managers. And if you can talk to the technicians that you'll be working with, um, try to get an insight on what, what the dealership offers, okay. what the job offers and make a wise decision. Don't just jump into a place because it does look really bad to on your resume for, to be jumping from job to job. Difference between import and domestic dealerships? Um, in my experience, uh, uh, any larger size domestic dealership is going to be compartmentalized. Where I'm at right now, you know, we have a front end of brakes. We got 15A, which is electrical and interior um, electrical stuff. Um, an AC, then we got a trans guy, we got heavy two line. guys, and then we got heavy line, which is what I'm doing right now, you know, not my favorite, but, um, you know, it's really limited on what you can learn and what you can do as opposed to, you know, working with a, a Asian manufacturer, most of them are bumper to bumper. Uh, you take a car in, you do everything that's wrong with it. You learn everything. Um, I prefer that. I prefer to be able to get a ticket and say, okay, there are five different concerns here. I'm gonna clean this ticket. I'm gonna make all the money there is to be made on this car and um, build a repertoire with the customer. You know, I can talk to the advisor, say, hey, I need to take a ride with this customer, <clears throat> take a ride with that customer, build a relationship, and then that customer can request me as their mechanic every time they come in. You know, I'm the technician working on their car and I can be the only technician that worked on their car from the time they bought it to the time they don't own it anymore. Yeah. You know, and that, that makes a big difference. You know, when, when things are slow and, and good customers come in and say, I want Dennis to work on my car, um, that's guaranteed work, you know? Um, and I'm not limited to do anything else on a car, you know? Uh, and it, in my experience, it seems also the Asian manufacturers, <clears throat> they don't do a lot of engine teardown, you know? You might do a head gasket or, or something, but for the most part, you find no compression on a, on a motor. You find a problem with the valves or the pistons. You're gonna be replacing the motor with a remanufactured motor from the dealership. Um, opposed to GM, you know, I've, I've been 
tearing motors apart for the last three months. You know, I've been putting pistons in cars, um, heads on he heads on cars, and um, inevitably, sometimes we do end up replacing motors. You know, if you have cylinder wall scored or something, something catastrophic, you will replace the motor. But you got to get there. You have to tear yeah. the heads off. You got to tear it apart. You got to check all these parts visually and and using um, precision tools to. So a GM mechanic, GM dealership. Um, domestic dealerships will try to find the problem inside the engine whereas say with a Mazda or a Toyota or a Honda nine times out of ten they're just gonna replace the motor yeah yeah same with the transmission I mean our transmission guy is tearing transmissions apart and rebuilding them all day long um, at Mazda I've, I've had one transmission apart it was a manual transmission that there was a bulletin on to repair you know so you're pulling gears you're pulling you took cuts. it apart uh, no, I didn't do it. Um, I, I diagnosed the car and another tech that had done Friend the job multiple okay. times had did, did the work. Um, but, you know, watching watching that, you know, I'd much rather R&R a trans than tear apart and rebuild a trans. <laughs> you know, a lot less, uh, lot less, lot less risk. Um, and when you're working flat rate, man, it's, it's how many jobs can you get in and out doing a, a good and efficient job and, you know, making the repair the first time yeah you know? so ask ask the manager if you can see the shop hours see look at the shop hours for the last three months see what guys are actually flagging because um shop shop managers supervisors guys that are hiring they they just need guys in there it's hard to find a good tech these days so they'll tell you whatever they need to tell you to get into a place once your toolbox is there it's it's a lot harder to push out than if it's in your truck what do you mean they'll tell you anything they want to tell uh, you I've, to get in there they'll lie to you yeah yeah it's the automotive industry guys if you're not ready to be lied to <laughs> get out of it um, they're gonna lie to you there's a, there's a lot of bs going around man and, a lot of uh, politics in dealerships too i've been there i was at a gm dealership a lot of you politics you gotta have really thick skin man you gotta have really thick skin and you gotta let be able to let stuff slide off your back and and not hold grudges because you got to work with these advisors these service managers and and the other techs man it's dog eat dog out there if you can't handle it if you got thin skin um this ain't the trade for you yeah i'm not gonna go home and sit in the corner and suck your thumb and rock back and forth yeah nobody's gonna nobody cares nobody cares <laughs> nobody's gonna pet your head in the corner you know <laughs> you're gonna are you okay dennis are you okay <laughs> Do you want to actually they want a bottle and they prefer you to be curled up in a ball in the corner that way they can make the hours that you should have oh the other guys yeah, will just oh run yeah. you down oh yeah yeah at a dealership you I mean all the guys are flagging they're all you know flat rating it um if they can you know put somebody under the you know throw somebody under the bus or or um you know steal, not steal that work but you know they see you as competition even though you're the guy next door in the bays you guys are civil to each other if you guys are both drivability techs or both heavy line techs you know there's animosity when they get that gravy job that came in and the other guy stuck doing you know warranty stuff yeah you know and i've always lived lived my life by the golden rule you know do unto others as you like others to do unto you you know so if a guy's having trouble i i always try to uh, go over and offer help you know um but the majority of guys out there aren't like that you know if you find a shop where where the the guys in the shop are all like that and they're all working together and all helping out man they found a good thing keep an eye out we'll uh soon he's gonna launch his channel as well pretty soon and as soon as he does i'll bring him back on here um, we'll do a shout out to him and um either bring him back or i'll do it myself but uh dennis is a great guy he's been my friend for a long long time we've probably known each other what 12 years now if not longer okay. but uh is there any uh, parting words you want to tell our viewers at bundy's garage anything at all no nah. No, got nothing. <laughs> Thank you, Dennis. I appreciate it. Appreciate your time. Um, questions, comments, concerns, you can always reach out to me at bunniesgarage at gmail.com. You can follow me on Twitter at Bunny's Garage. You can also follow me on Facebook. Uh, I wish I had made it to SEMA, but I didn't this year. Guys, take care. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you can, and uh, keep your eye out for more videos.